This is part 33 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss working with dates in JavaScript. To create date object in JavaScript, we use the date constructor. The example here writes the current date and time to the web page. Let's look at this in action. So to get the date object in JavaScript, we use the date constructor. So this variable d here will hold the current date and time. Let's write its value to the web page. So when we run this, we should get the current date and time printed. Notice that today is January 6, 2015 and the time is 20 hours, 36 minutes and 06 seconds. And notice we also have the time zone information. At the moment, the time zone on my machine is GMT. So let's change the time zone to something else. Let's actually change the time zone to Indian Standard Time, that is IST. And let's refresh this page. Notice that we now get the time in India. At the moment, in this example here, we're using the constructor without any arguments. So in this case, it's going to return the current date and time. It is also possible to create a date object with specific dates. And there are two ways we can do this. In this example right here, notice that we are constructing a date object with specific date. And in this example, we are passing a string that contains uh, you know, a given specific date. So here the month is January and the date is 13 and the year is 1980. The numbers that you see here are the first set of numbers uh, represent the hours, next minutes and then seconds. So this date constructor is going to take that date string and then construct a date object out of it and store it in this variable and then we are writing its value to the document. So to speed things up, I have already typed this code, so let's copy and paste it within Visual Studio. So when we run this, we should get, you know, the date printed. So here we are using the date string to construct a date object. Another way to create a specific date object is by using numbers for year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. And here is an example for that. So the year is 1980, and the month number is zero. So the important thing to keep in mind is that in JavaScript, month numbers start from zero. So for January, it's one. For February, it, I mean, for January, it is zero. February, it is one. And for December, it is 11. And the next number that we have here is the date. And then we have hours, minutes, and then seconds, finally, milliseconds. So in this example, we're using numbers to construct the date. Okay. Again, to speed things up, I have this already typed. So let's copy that. Let's actually print an HTML break. And then paste this code. So if you notice, we get the same date object in both the cases. Here, we're using numbers to construct the date. In this example, we are using a date string to construct the date. So when we run this in both the cases, we should get the same date printed. There we go. Here, we have some useful date object methods. So all of these are instance methods, meaning you call it on the date object. So get full year is going to return the full year, that is with all the four digits. Get month will return the month number. Remember, in JavaScript, month numbers start from zero. So it's going to return the month number. Now, there may be situations where in your application you want to return a month name instead of month number. So let's see how to do that. So at the moment, here we have got a date object. Now, on that date object, when we say get month, it returns the month. And at the moment, the month is January. So it's going to return that month number which is zero. And let's write its value to the web page. So it should print zero now. Now let's say instead of 
month number we want to actually print month name so how to achieve that we have to write a custom JavaScript function for that so let's write that function now so I'm going to write a function let's call this get month name from month number and we pass this function month number parameter so here I'm going to create a variable and this is going to hold all the month numbers so here I'm actually going to create an array of month names and this is going to contain months from January to December to speed things up I have already typed the month names so let's copy and paste them here so within this array now we have all the month names starting from January till December and then what we are going to do is return the respective month name from this array. So I'm going to index it with the parameter that is coming into this function, which is month number. So for example, to this function, if we pass month number as G zero, so month names of zero is going to return January. If you pass one, it's going to return February. If you pass 11, it's going to return December. So let's call this function here and then actually print the month name. So I'm going to call the function right here and pass it month number. So this variable contains the month number. So let's pass that to this function. So month number is 0 and for 0 it will return January. So when we run this we should actually get January printed. There we go. Get date is going to return the day of the month that is you know from 1 to 31 and get day returns the day number of the week. Just like month numbers, day numbers start from 0. 0 is Sunday, 1 is Monday and so on. So there may be situations again in your application where you want to get the week day name instead of day number of the week. So let's see how to achieve that. Now it's going to be very much similar to this. So when we say here dot get day, it's going to return the day number of the week. Okay, let's actually call this day to give it a meaningful name. And then let's write the value that is present in this day variable to the web page. Remember January 13th, 1980 is Sunday, so it's going to return zero for that day. Okay? Now instead of week day number, we want the week day name. So to get that, let's write again a custom function. Let's actually make a copy of this function and let's call it get week name from week number and let's rename this variable name to week number and this variable to week names and instead of month names here we are going to contain um, weekday names and again to speed things up I have already typed this so let's copy and paste them here so here we have got the weekday names And then what we're going to do is return the respective weekday name. So we pass the week number to this array. So we are indexing that with the parameter that comes into this function. So weekday names of 0 is going to return Sunday. Weekday names of 1 is going to return Monday, so on and so forth. So now let's call this function right here. So get week names. Uh, I mean week name from week number and then pass the day number for it and let's run this. So it should print Sunday. So how to get the day of the week from the day number we have just seen that example now. Now the important thing as far as working with dates is you know converting the date to a specific format. So how to convert the date object to DDMMYYY format. Now notice for example if we write the value that is present in you know the date of birth variable so it contains the date object. So when we run this we get the date in this format. Now instead of this format I want the date to be in DDMMYYY yyy format 
if the day is less than 10, for example, if it is 8, then we want two digits for the date, 0, 8. Similarly, if the month has got only two digits, um, then we want you know a 0 to be prefixed before that single digit month number. So let's see how to achieve that. So I'm going to again write a custom function for that. Let's call it format date. And this function is going to receive date object as the parameter. And then it's going to format the date into DD, MM, YYY. Now for now, instead of passing it as a parameter, let's actually create a variable. Let's call it date and initialize that with a new date object. The reason I'm doing this is because we get IntelliSense on this date object within this function. And later, we can remove that variable and pass it as a parameter to this function. So the first thing that I want to do is get the year part. So var year equals date dot get full year. So this is going to return all the four digits of the year. And then the next thing I want to do is get the month. So var month equals date dot get month. Remember, month numbers in JavaScript start from zero. So let's increment the month number by one. Now, if it's a single digit month number, then we want to prefix zero in front of it. So if month is less than 10, then month equals zero plus month. So we are prefixing zero before it. Similarly, we want to get the date. So let's call it day equals date dot get date should return us the date that is from 1 till 31. And again, if the day is a single digit day, I mean, if it is 1 or 2 or anything less than 10, then we want to prefix 0 before that single digit. So day equals 0 plus day. And then finally, return the day, uh, I mean the date in the format that you want. So we want the date to be in DD, MM, YYY. So I'm going to return the day first and then prefix a forward slash and then the month and then prefix a forward slash and then the year. Now at the moment we have you know this date object as a variable here but we don't want that. We want the date object to be passed as a parameter so I'm going to get rid of this line right here and then pass the date object as a parameter to this format date function. So now let's go ahead and call this function right here and give it the date of birth. So format date and then pass the date of birth object to it. So now it should print this date in DDMMYYY format. So notice that we get the date first, and then the month, and then the year. Notice that we also have zero before that single digit month number. Now in some cases, you may want, if it's a single digit month or day, then in that case, you want to print that single digit. If that is the case, simply comment this section where we are prefixing zeros before single digit month and day numbers. Okay, so now if we go ahead and run this, we will get single digit for the month. Since the date is double digit, we get the double digits. For example, if we change the date to something single digit, like January 8, 1980, we should get single digit. Thank you for listening and have a great day.